do some of Good morning. Sunday has come, thank God. And this Sunday we are observing as the first Sunday after Trinity. The order of worship for our service this morning will be the order of Matins. And our service will begin with our opening hymn. Hymn number 411.
Please rise. Dearly beloved, we've come together in the presence of God, our Heavenly Father, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at His hand, to set forth His most worthy praise, to hear His holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and salvation. O oh, come, let us worship Him. Let us kneel and bow down before Him. Let us confess our sins with penitent hearts and obtain forgiveness by his infinite grace and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed the devices and desires of our hearts. We have offended against your holy law. We have done those things which we should not have done and we have not done those things which we should have done. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Spare us and restore us according to the promises you have declared to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. For his sake, grant that we may live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. The Almighty and merciful Lord has granted us pardon and forgiveness for all of our sins, grace for true repentance and the amendment of life, and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Let us worship the Lord, for He is our Maker. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is he. Please be seated. Hymn 409, verses 1, 2, and 3.
The Old Testament lesson appointed for the first Sunday after Trinity is written in Jeremiah chapter 9. We read there verses 23 and 24. It's written, Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, let not the mighty man boast in his might, let not the rich man boast in his riches, but let him who boasts boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy say I have prevailed over him lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. The epistle lesson for this Sunday is written in 1 John chapter 4, and we read there verses 16 through 21. It's written, we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
As you are able, please rise and honor the gospel of our Lord Jesus. The gospel lesson for the first Sunday after Trinity is written in St. Luke chapter 16, and we read there verses 19 through 31. These verses will also serve as the basis for our sermon this morning. It's written, There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and Lazarus in like manner bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able and none may cross from there to us. And he said, then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come to this place of torment. But Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to you. Please be seated. Our chief hymn for today, hymn 406.
We pray. O oh, Almighty God, most merciful Father, we thank and praise you that you have caused to, to be declared to us true riches and eternal salvation. We plead with you that you would be with us and deliver us from the deceitfulness of wealth, that you would also deliver us from the discouragements, frustrations, and worries, cares of this life. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us that we may repent, that we may believe with all of our hearts in your gracious kindness and the forgiveness of all of our sins. And in this way, supply us, cleanse our wounds, sustain us and grant us to rest with you. To this end, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer, amen. In the name of Jesus, the death of all of our sins and the good things of all who live. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, amen. With the stories that the Lord Jesus tells, sometimes in parables, sometimes in true stories from the sacred history, our Lord Jesus teaches us to see things differently with repentant eyes and with eyes of faith. Today, he takes us to a luxurious house, a home of the rich man to tell us the story of the rich man and poor Lazarus who was laid at his door. There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. Purple was the color of royalty. Nobody else could afford it. It was hard to make in those days. It was costly. And as for fine linen, think of the most comfortable clothing. And yet also name brand stuff, right? So stylish. And picture a table then set for for you with anything that you could ask for. Picture being cared for like this, taking care of yourself like this day in and day out. Everything is bright and clean for you to wake up to and to bathe and smell the breakfast and the coffee. The servants are there to set up the table and top off your drink and get you anything that you want all day long. And at his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus covered with sores who desired to be fed with whatever fell from the rich man's table and even the dogs came and licked his sores. The Lord Jesus sets before us two extremes because in the extremes, the story that the Lord Jesus tells, he wants to teach two lessons for us. And sometimes folks have looked at this lesson and have committed themselves, I mean this Bible lesson, this Bible story, and committed themselves to a life of poverty as if to earn God's favor by being poor. But you see, the the truth is some of the saints of old, like Abraham and David, they had wealth. Some of them, not all, but some. And some of the, uh, the believers in the New Testament too, although not all, but some of them were people of means, ranking officials, wealthy women. He's not teaching salvation by poverty. But with these two lessons side by side, the rich man and Lazarus, the Lord Jesus is teaching two different lessons. And the first one is the deceptiveness of wealth. As the Lord Jesus says in John, or rather in Mark 4, the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word and it proves unfruitful. This the Lord Jesus wants to teach. Wealth will lie to you. 
like it did to the man looking over his portfolio, saying, I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones and eat and drink and take life easy. And then when he least expected it, he died. The rich man believed his purples and his fine linens and the sermon that he was hearing and reading into everything that he had. And it told him that he was rich and that he must be favored and that he was blessed. And so he never saw how poor and blind and naked he really was. Yet it's uncomfortable But the truth is, you don't have to be filthy rich to fall for the deceptiveness of wealth, to believe in money and possessions, to love these things and give your heart to them. And so it says in the scriptures, if riches increase, set not your heart on them. Sooner or later, the last plate of food is finished. Sooner or later, the last cup is drained and the party is over. And that was when the rich man realized that all that he loved and all that he believed and all that he had trusted in, it couldn't save him. And yet this this love of wealth, this love of money, which is called mammon, given a name like an idol, It clings to you to the very end. And when your heart clings to the wrong God, everything goes sideways. And for the rich man, Lazarus in his troubles, the troubles of Lazarus testify against him. If ever he wouldn't look at him, pretended not to see him, wouldn't touch him because he was dirty after all. And in so much suffering with his sores and with his troubles, he must have done something to deserve this. Text doesn't say that about the rich man. And yet, if you put yourself in the rich man's shoes, who am I to argue with fate? or to get in the way of the lesson that this man has to learn. You see, it turns out that this charity thing is hard. You know you ought to help people, but you worry as to whether or not there's going to be enough for you, and you want for yourself those things that are yours to give away. In order not to enable others, you may give yourself permission not to care. The theme for our sermon today, blessed is he that considereth the poor. Blessed not in in the luxury that we've grown used to and come to expect the instant gratification, but blessed is he. After all, where is is the gospel in this lesson? Where is it always? It's in Jesus, and it is with him, and in, in the way that he knows Lazarus by name. When the rich man is never named in this parable or this story because Jesus does not know him, But Lazarus, forgotten by everyone and alone in his poverty and his suffering, Jesus knows him. He can't claim any merit, any power to save or help himself. The poor man can't cleanse himself. The poor man has no soap. He has no strength and no one looks after him. He has no clean clothes to change into. He has no toothbrush. He has no rag to wash his face. And you know how it feels even if you haven't showered for too long. 
You want to just feel human again. And maybe a scrap of food comes along. Will this be daily bread? And maybe a dog comes to bring some little relief for all the, the soreness. But Jesus knows this man. Jesus knows Lazarus and loves him and considers him. Blessed is he who considers the poor. Blessed is Jesus who is not afraid to look at and to speak to and to touch and to kiss the unwashed face of the poor and the unclean and the broken and those who have nothing to give. He loves and he knows Lazarus and he loves and he knows any and all who will believe in him. And he invites everyone to come to his table and to sit with him as his guests. How the foolish rich man kicks himself forever that he turned up his nose to such kindness, preferring instead the food that spoils and perishes with the use, and preferring instead the wine that runs out. Blessed is he, blessed is Jesus, who sat with us in our misery and spoke to us in order to give us hope and to give us his truth. Blessed is he who though he was rich, yet yet he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. Blessed is he who bore the marks and the wounds and the sores of our disobedience and the curse that was come on us. And blessed is he who washed you clean in the water of, of, his, of his pierced side and washed you in the wash of his blood. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord to dress you in the purple of his wounds and the fine linen of his perfect holiness. The Lord who sets a table for you and prepares you to eat there by a sermon that speaks to your heart for your soul's benefit and for your delight and for your holy joy to eat with him. You see, you don't need to be in abject poverty to share the hidden life of Jesus by faith. Thank God for every day that we have daily bread and clothing and shoes And for that matter, thank God for a dog's tongue, which is gross, right? But it's like the foam on the lips of a preacher who wants your hope to be in Jesus. And so God gives this word from him to preach to your heart, to comfort you, to reassure you, by which he, your dear Lord, is loving you. Do you believe this? Yeah, you do. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Thanks be to God. The peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. We join together in the Te Deum hymn. Hymn number 43. Hymn 43, verses 1 through 4.
Please rise. Most merciful Father in heaven, strengthen us to fight the good fight of faith. Give us boldness and confidence to speak your word of mercy and truth and justice in a world that doesn't care to listen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, raise up for us faithful pastors, missionaries, teachers, and leaders in the church. Stir up the hearts of your faithful people to serve you with gladness, humility, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, be with and walk with all who are grieving the death of loved ones. Comfort them with the hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, give strength and patience to those who are struggling in their finances. Raise up people and institutions to help them in their struggles. Help us all to look with mercy upon those who need help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we pray for the government of our nation, our state, and our city. Raise up faithful and wise leaders who will defend the weak and fight for justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, look with favor upon all who are sick or injured or recovering. Have mercy upon them and heal them according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father in heaven, we come before you with a prayer on behalf of our Evangelical Lutheran Synod, which prepares for its convention, uh, which begins next Sunday. We ask your blessing upon all those who travel and ask your blessing upon our Synod and convention Grant your blessing upon all of its pastors and its delegates and the congregations in our churches. Be with and bless and help all those who are uh, in sorrow, all those who are lonely, all those who are wandering from the faith. Merciful God, be with them and attend them to bring them back to yourself. We say a special prayer for Tony Walken. We say a special prayer for the ministry of your congregation here at Redeemer. Lord, have mercy. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Lord, we commend all these things to your infinite mercies, which are new every morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, the strength of all those that put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us your grace to keep your commandments that we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doing being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. 
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Please be seated. Hymn 596. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see all of you, and thank you, everybody, for the chance to be together here in God's house today. God bless you by all the things that you heard and received from the Lord Jesus this morning.